All right, welcome back everyone. Let's see if we can get through another section. Uh, today we'll look at observational studies and designed experiments. Um, so just another definition heavy section. Chapter one has a lot of vocab. So if you can print, it'd be great to print these out. You can also find them in the textbook or just write them out by hand. So let's start with an observational study. An observational study is when researchers simply gather or record data that already exists in the real world. It's often referred to as natural data. Um, so they don't really like conduct an experiment or anything. They might just collect someone's transcripts. They might collect someone's pay stubs, right? Your pay stub already exists. Um, they don't really do anything other than collect something that's already there. They could even go on the internet and find data like statistics in basketball or baseball, right? Um, all that already exists. And we call that observational. Designed is when we actually design an experiment. So in this case, a designed experiment, um, we have some sort of control over the subject. And researchers can make decisions on behalf of the subject. Um, and they often change the value of a variable of interest. So this might sound really weird in definition form, but the idea is maybe like um, a placebo versus a drug or with COVID, right? Maybe they're doing a placebo vaccine versus a real vaccine that they're testing so that they can compare if the vaccine's actually working, right? And they're controlling these people. They're deciding who's getting the vaccine and who's not getting the vaccine. Um, and designed experiments are actually a lot better um, because you can show cause and effect. So in terms of that COVID vaccine, right, you can show that it's helping COVID, right? You can prove that it's actually working when you do it as a designed experiment. Observational, you can't actually prove this. You only show that there's a relationship, not cause and effect. And we'll get into this a lot later. Um, so just keep these definitions in mind and in a little bit we will do some examples. Um, so let's do a little bit more vocab and then in the next video we'll have examples to like understand all this. So lots of vocab. Um, so treatments. Um, treatments are the different values for a variable that will be assigned to the subject by the experimenter. So again, placebo versus medicine. Um, they might have like Three different medicines, so those are variables. Um, a control group um, is when two or more treatment options um, should be possible, and the control group is the one where there's no treatment. So we probably, most of us probably have heard of a placebo. That's the no treatment group. Um, randomization, um, it just means things need to be randomly decided. Um, we need to randomly decide which treatment a subject is to receive in the experiment. Um, the subjects can't make that choice because we could say maybe there's some sort of relationship between why they're making this choice. Um, so it needs to be random. That's one of the most important things in this entire class, random. We'll hear that a lot. Replication. Uh, it just means using many subjects. It should make sense that one person's not enough to prove something. Yeah can be really hard to make conclusions from one subject, um, but if we have a large sample, um, then patterns that emerge can actually make meaningful conclusions. A few more vocab words. Um, a single blind experiment. Um, this just means the subject is not aware of which treatment they're receiving. Um, so you don't know if you have the placebo or if you have the real medicine. Um, and then in a double-blind experiment, if there's any weird pauses, it's because my dog barks and I have to pause. So that's why there might have been an awkward pause right before there. Um, but a double-blind experiment, um, it means that the researcher interacting also doesn't know. So the person handing you the medication um, or the person interacting with you, um, they just don't know which one they're giving you. Because they can, some people would argue that that might also influence um, person receiving the medicine. 
um, confounding variables. Um, if the variations in experimental outcomes can be realistically caused by more than one variable. So is there something else that could be causing this? Um, so in terms of a medicine helping you sleep, did the medicine help you sleep or did you do something else that helped you sleep, right? Did you exercise a lot that day? Did you drink, right? Are there other things that made you fall asleep than the medicine? And we call those confounding variables. Um, and this is why randomization and replication are so important because they can help reduce the effects of confounding variables. Um, because not every single person will have that same confounding variable. So by assigning randomly and having lots of people, it takes care of that. Um, a few more words. The response variable is the variable. Um, this is the variable that might be affected by the variables we are controlling. So it's kind of like the output. So the variables we're controlling are like the medicine, um, and the response is, are they cured of COVID, right? Or are they sleeping better? Um, so the response variable is almost like an output if you want to relate it to an algebra class. Um, we have data ethics is also super important. Um, if you do a study, right, you should follow ethics. Um, so informed consent is important. The participants need to be informed of any risks that may be involved in participating in the study. That should make sense, right? Um, and you should also obtain written consent before they participate. And obviously, participants should be kept confidential. Um, so just a lot of vocab. Um, in the next video, I'll do a bunch of examples.